Linden, Aspen, Maple, Ash. A postcard setting. Slant light and falling leaves. Gravel switchback leading to a keep-out gate. More sentry trees. A clustering clot of outbuildings. Spare metal sheds. An emptied four-car garage. At the heart of the property, alone in bloody maple drift, stands an incongruous house, a hard-edged, sumptuous folly that at first glance seems neglected. Dusty windows, drawn blinds, heavy bicycle chain hung across the door, front door. The chain is old. The locks, two locks, are bright and new. Everywhere broken bicycles. Question. So what you're saying is that the process is equal to the art produced? That how is essentially why? Answer. No, I... No. I'm saying the way I make my art can't be separated out from what I make. Like, uh, like an egg white, okay? Christ, where do they find you people? I'm saying that when I aim a bike at a tree and crash it, that that's part of what the piece is about. The velocity, where it hits, how it fragments. Every time it's different, none of them end up the same. Question. Yet the process is identical. Are you willing to discuss what informs the process itself? Answer. Give me a hand here. His right arm is in a sling. He needs help to light another cigarette. I have no idea what you just said. Question. More simply, then. Why do you make art by running bicycles into trees? What drives your particular mode of self-expression? No answer. Question. Are you at all willing to discuss? Answer. I thought you wanted to talk about my work. I thought this was... Question. But art is a product of a human imagination, a human mind, a human body, especially your art, Mr. Vukovich. You shattered your arm while making this latest sculpture. You... Answer. I don't have to listen to this shit. Break. The house was built in the early 1970s, an austere and modern fantasia of brushed metal and glass block. It has eight rooms, three of them very large. The living or reception room, which takes up most of the first floor, the dining room, and the master bedrooms. The rest are markedly, almost painfully small. All are spare, as in a monastery or zendo. Low teak tables, white futons, stainless steel appliances. All the windows have identical white paper blinds. All the walls are red. The dining table is laid with service for nine. Question. Were you pleased with the Ortega installation? Answer. Sure. Mary was great. She always does a great job. Question. She's been your dealer for quite some time now, correct? Since you returned from Arizona? No answer. Question. Mary Ortega is well known, almost notorious, for her attraction to, let's see, a certain type of painful art. Art that expresses hurtful or violent emotions. Art that specifically... Answer. Jesus Christ, you're not going to get off it, are you? You didn't come here to talk about my work at all. All you want to talk about is my goddamn father. Isn't that right? He needs help to light his cigarette. His uninjured arm is trembling badly, almost theatrically. There are plenty of articles about him. Why don't you go read them? Why don't you do a search online? You'll be fucking buried in... Uh, question. Your father was a famous man, and since his death... Answer. He didn't die. He killed himself. Question. Forgive me. Since his suicide, you've lived here alone in the house that he designed and commissioned, making art that graphically recalls the manner of his death. Mr. Vukovich, I don't mean to be unkind or impertinent... But when a father commits suicide by driving into a tree, and his son's art does nothing but recreate that moment, 
one cannot help but speculate that these things are intimately related. One cannot answer. You think it's some kind of of tribute? Is that it? Jesus, you think that I question what I think is unimportant. What matters are your thoughts, your ideas about the answer. I think you better pack up your little briefcase and go. That's what I think. The Red House, as it is called, is a kind of singularity, and as such, there was for a time a great demand for tours, from architecture and design professionals, professors and students, historians interested in its provenance, cultural anthropologists, as well as all the lesser hordes that treasure celebrity and wealth. After the owner's spectacular and graphic suicide, the estate fell hostage to legal squabbles between his first wife and current partner. The dispute was eventually resolved in the wife's favour, but by that time she herself had died, in a fire at her horse farm in Truro. The couple's only surviving relative, a son, himself an artist, came into possession of the house and immediately discontinued all public tours. It was believed that he was living on the property, but his attorney's office would not confirm that this was true. Question. Perhaps it would... Perhaps we might talk a little about your early work. In Switzerland, you... Answer. If you want to talk about him, I don't care. No, really. Let's do it. I don't give a fuck. Speech today is slurred. He seems to have difficulty sitting upright. The cast has been removed from his arm, but he is still wearing a sling. Question. You sure? I don't want... All right, then. Your father, Edwin Vukovich. Answer. The Prince of Darkness. Ed to his friends. Of which he had none. Not even my mother. My mother used to warn me not to tell him anything. Where I lived, what I was doing. If you tell him, he can use it, she always said. Don't give him anything he can use. Question. He was an architect. Answer. Architect Manke. Everyone thinks he designed the Red House, you know, but that's not true. He got this kid from RISD to make some drawings, and then he... Anyway, when I was at school... Everyone thought he was like some big influence on me. Influence? He never even saw one of my installations. Not one. Question. And yet perhaps his influence was felt in other ways? Answer. Yeah, like cancer. When I was in Berlin, fuck Berlin when I was in Sedona, these people would show up out of the blue, these sideshow freaks. Once, at one of my openings, this woman came up to me. She had all these pictures she wanted me to look at. Pictures of him, you know, him and her, and he was like an insect, you know, a praying mantis or a scorpion or something. He had no idea what it was like to be human, and he didn't care. Question. Yet he was quoted more than once as saying how proud he was of your work. He even tried to purchase one of your... Answer. Right. Heresy. It was one of the first things I did at Mary's. It was like a ski run with these little... You've seen it, right? Question. Photographs of it, yes. It was an extraordinary installation. The almost insane sense of speed, of uncontrolled velocity. Answer. Yeah. A good piece. But Mary's smart, you know. She gave him a lot of sweet talk, but she wouldn't let him have the piece. Just like my mother said. Like voodoo. Skin cells, little bits of bone. They didn't tell you how he used to beat my mother, did they? He'd go through her closet, take out one of her little chain belts, Gucci, whatever, and just go to town. I used to try to get between them, make him stop. When I got older, I bought a gun. I actually thought it would help. 
but I didn't need a gun. What I needed was silver bullets. Question. Mr. Vukovich? Answer. Or a stake through his heart. Right? Isn't that how you kill the devil? But that's the thing, you know. That's the whole fucking problem, because you can't kill the devil. Not ever. Not with stakes, or crosses, or lawyers, or... Question. Mr. Vukovich, if this is distressing you, we... Answer. Christ, my arm hurts. Break. In the room that was formerly used as the laundry, the appliances have been removed and a small living space constructed, a scruffy human patch on the glass and steel. The items inside, a blue down sleeping bag worn and licking feathers, a Coleman stove, a bed tray, a scuffed plastic wash tub, suggest an extended habitation. A shelf has been affixed three feet from the floor just above the bundled sleeping bag in easy reach of anyone lying below. On this shelf is a pink drugstore flashlight, an inhaler, an ashtray, a Remington automatic shotgun, its barrel sheared almost to the nub, and a copy of Art in America. Above the shelf is a crucifix, olive wood, immensely old. The corpus has been replaced with two bent roofing nails. Answer. When I was working on acrimony, I kept getting these phone calls. At first I thought it was just crank stuff, some dumb shit breathing on the phone. Once or twice I even talked to him. Just, you know. Are you having fun, asshole? Mary said it was creepy and that I ought to call the cops or the phone company or something, but I didn't. I thought it was kind of funny. But then he started calling me at home. Question. You were staying? Answer. At home. At the Red House. Question. I don't... The number is unlisted. Answer. There are no phones in the house. No phone jacks, even. But I'd hear it ring and ring and ring. It'd go on for fucking hours. Sometimes I'd go sit outside just to get away from the sound. Sometimes I'd sleep outside. Then I started sleeping at the gallery in Mary's office, which helped. You should see your face. You look like the cat that just ate shit. Question. Silence. Answer. When I finally got the show up, the call stopped. Like he was trying to fuck me over, right? Get me to stop working? Answer. Who? Question. Who do you think? Mary said I was working too hard, you know, or taking too much speed. Wait, erase that. But if it was the speed, then how come I never heard it unless I was working? The phone and the knocking on the windows. I had them come and trim the branches, just hack them away from the house. I mean, I knew what it was, but I wanted to be sure, right? And I was right. It wasn't trees, or shrubs, or branches. It was goddamn knocking. And it was him. Just like the phone was him. Just like the guy at the bike shop, the one I always use, right? Now he won't sell me any more bikes. He says it's too dangerous. Dangerous? To him, he means, because he knows, because he gets into people's heads, like poison gas or something, like he did to my mother. I watched him do it. She used to be, she was so... And then he killed her. I know it was him. There was no way that barn burned by itself. And he got Teo, too. Question. Teo? Answer. Her horse. They found them together. She was all... And then he tried to do it to me. In Sedona, Berlin. Where the fuck ever? Doesn't matter. Never did. You think being dead is a problem for him? Hell no. It just makes it easier, you know? It just makes everything easier. Question. Mr. Vukovich? 
Mr. Vukovic, when you were working on Calefaction, Mary Ortega was quoted as, Answer, don't change the subject. Don't change the subject. You said you wanted to talk about him. Well, that's what we're talking about. Are you afraid? Is that it? Speak of the devil and the devil appears? But he's already here. He's already right. Question. Mr. Vukovic? Answer. Stop saying that. Break. As per the trust, the Red House and its grounds are serviced on a seasonal schedule. Mowing, raking, bundling brush, blowing snow, repairing the depredations of weather, replacing the furnace filter, caulking the cracks. There is a lavish budget set aside for these things, and they are always faithfully performed. The former laundry room is rigorously avoided, unless there is actual damage within it needing repair. When the lawn crews arrive, the broken and discarded bicycles are carefully removed to the garage. Before the crews leave, the parts are restored to their earlier approximate positions. This is not part of the trust's directions, but there is a sizable rider to the maintenance contract to ensure that these things are done or not done. Money, as always, is neutral and efficient in its demands. Question. You have a new show opening soon? Answer. I'm not. Yeah, I guess. I don't know the dates. You'd better ask Mary. Question. It's titled The Earl King. Is that right? Answer. Yeah. Mary doesn't like it, the title. But that's just too fucking bad. I know what I'm doing. Question. Mr. Vukovic, you... Would you rather not continue today? You seem very... Answer. I don't seem like anything. I am. You would be, too. Maybe you will be. He doesn't like me to talk to you, you know. So I was up all fucking night last night, listening to him crawl through the pipes. I was afraid to... to take a shit, you know? Because what if he decided to crawl inside me? I wouldn't put it past him. I wouldn't put anything past him. Question. Perhaps we ought to reschedule our... Answer. Perhaps you ought to shut the fuck up and listen to what I'm telling you. Listen. Did you hear that? Question. Hear what? I didn't. Answer. Oh, yes, you did. You wanted to know all about my art. My homage to his suicide, or whatever you called it. Question. I answer... Like it's some weird Oedipal thing. But the fact is, I just have to keep doing it, you know, until it sticks, until it works. Man, you think I like to keep doing the same piece over and over? Think I like hurting myself, breaking my arm and my shin and my fucking heel bone, which still hurts, they never did set it right. But I have to. I don't need that guy at the bike shop. I can order anything I want. They don't even have to know it's me. Because if he's in the pipes today, where will he be tomorrow? Huh? Up my ass, that's where, and crawling out of my mouth. You think I need that? I'd rather break my neck on a bike. I'd rather... Question. Mr. Vukovic, you're very upset. We better stop this now. We better just... Answer. You see this gun? Question. I... Oh, my God. Look, I, I'm i leaving now. I can't... Answer. No, take it. Take it. And hold it on me. Like this. Like this. Hold it. That's right. You sit there and you hold it. And if he crawls out of my mouth, you shoot him. Hear me? Shoot the motherfucker in the head. Because of the way the Red House is constructed, because of its placement on the grounds and the arrangement of the trees and shrubs around it, it owns a peculiar radiance in the early evening sun, a deep and affecting glow as if the house were lit from within, 
like fire in the depths of a jewel. Visitors are not always aware of this phenomenon, and are sometimes confused by the house's name, seeing only its gunmetal grey and glass exterior. But if one arrives at Almanac Sundown, the house will indeed be glowing, its inner nature made profoundly manifest, as hot and red and chambered as a beating heart.